Welcome everyone to the Dr. Abs HealthCast. I'm your host, Dr. Brian Abasolo, aka Dr. Abs. And on today's show, we have health coach Jeremy Abramson. Now, Jeremy is somebody that I am glad to call my friend. He's received some of the most coveted certifications in the industry and studied alongside elite professionals like Wim Hof and Joe Dispenza. Jeremy's Thrive program empowers top-level executives and entrepreneurs around the world to unleash their fullest potential. When he's not coaching clients, Jeremy loves creating content to educate and empower others. You can follow him on Instagram at CoachJeremy305 and his top-rated health show, The Energy Exchange Podcast. And that's a key word right there, energy. He's about to bring it. I can't wait. Let's get started with the interview. What is up, Jeremy? Welcome to the show, my brother. How you doing, man? Hey, I am doing excellent. I'm super excited that we're connecting. It's been a, uh, it's been an interesting few yeah, months. Man. Yeah, right. How you doing, and, with the man? How's everything going for you? Yeah, it's it's honestly been really a great opportunity to go inward, yeah. and you know, I have so much compassion for everybody who is struggling, whether that be with their health, whether that be with their business. I know so many people are facing adversity and obstacles right now, including you with your business, right? Um, For me, it's been an opportunity to really avoid and eliminate some of these distractions that were in my life before and really purify my priorities and, and create things that are super impactful. And it's allowed me, like I mentioned to you earlier, to connect with some amazing people that I may have not had the opportunity to connect with uh, if this wasn't happening. So, you know, I've really used this opportunity, Brian, to like add as much value to my clients, to my community, because I know three years, five years down the road, people are going to really remember how we showed up during these times absolutely yeah no man i mean it's uh i couldn't agree with you more i feel like you know we were in in complete lockdown i mean we're still kind of dealing with it right now but you know if you don't if you didn't grow coming out of this you know what i mean or if you didn't if you weren't able to maybe like you said connect with other people with with family members maybe you hadn't talked to in a while um friends you know uh, other uh colleagues in your field that you know could help everybody grow and just help a lot of people in the in the in the meantime I mean you know I I think people would make a mistake with that but you know somebody like you I mean I saw you constantly throughout the the quarantine period man your spirits were up your enthusiasm was up like always and uh you know what I mean I, I think a lot of people are are grateful for that man so so thank you I appreciate you bro I received that and and again I think it's it's really on full display right now that there's so many areas of our life that we don't have control over. And oftentimes we stress and we accumulate tension and anxiety about all these things going on externally on the outside. And I think this has been a really great opportunity to actually go inward, go face your shadows. What are those things that you need to work on because I really believe, Brian, that like your happiness is based on how you feel when you're by yourself. Yeah. It's easy when you're in a big group of people to get distracted and, and taken by this conversation or that conversation. And there's so many distractions. And I hope that people have really learned something about themselves, built awareness and like you said, have grown in some capacity. Absolutely. And definitely not, I mean, focus more so on the things that you can control, you know, all those external factors, listen, it is what it is. You deal with it the best you can, but, you know, focus on you and what you can control and, you know, what's going to help you grow. So I agree with that, man. But I want to talk about your platform, man. You're so positive. Um, You know, I always see you on social media, you know, encouraging people, uh, uh, providing so much a, a huge impact to people's lives. And I want to talk to you about the six things that humans need to thrive. You talk, the, you talk about this a lot on your platform. These, these six things are thoughts, habits, relationships, intention, 
vitality, and enthusiasm. So I want to kind of break down each one. I want you beautiful. to get into it. Let me know what your thoughts are on that, man. Hey, how, how can humans thrive? Exactly. And, and listen, I'm going to preface this, Brian, by saying, you know, like most people, I spent most of my life just living unconscious of my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions. And I feel like this is the way that most people navigate through life, just going through the motions, yeah. and never truly unleashing their potential or fully diving into their purpose. You know, the average American is 20 pounds overweight, $10,000 in debt, depressed and dislikes their job. So I don't know about you, bro, but I don't want to be average. Oh. No oh, man, you got you gotta you gotta reach for the stars, man. You gotta you gotta reach for something higher. There's got to be a bigger purpose in life than just the mundane everyday routine that you know. Unfortunately, a lot of people are in right now. Exactly, brother. So, you know, just to give people a little context, these last five years, I've really spent just diving deep with some of the top health and wellness professionals around the world, learning with them in person directly, and. People like Joe Dispenza, Wim Hof, Don Miguel Ruiz. And throughout all of these practices, throughout all of this wisdom that I've accumulated, I've, first of all, implemented it on my own, in my own life, and then seen tremendous improvements and benefits, and then started to implement these things with clients, with friends, with family, with athletes that I work with, and also got profound benefits. So basically, Thrive is the acronym that you're speaking about. And this is a, a program that I work pr predominantly with high, uh, high performing men, executives, entrepreneurs who are already successful in the business aspect of life, but they've had that success uh, while neglecting some other areas such as their health, their wellness, uh, their mental health, their relationships. So T, like you mentioned, is for thoughts. And we have 60,000 of them every day. And 90% of those thoughts that you have today, Brian, are probably the exact same thoughts you had yesterday. So most people yeah. are filled with a lot of these toxic thoughts mm -hmm. that involve them ruminating in the past, which I call rear view mirror syndrome. Yep. And by constantly dwelling on the past, you're perpetuating those same average results we spoke about earlier. So this is a, a huge reason why depression is the number one mental disorder in America right now, mm. right? Yeah. And I'm sure you've encountered a lot of people who are struggling with those type of emotions and experiences. So if you're not dwelling on the past, chances are you're worried about the future. You know, what do I have to do next? When are things going to open up? When am I going to be able to travel again? What's going to happen with my job? And understand that both of these thought patterns are fear-based. Yeah. So when you're operating from fear, your levels of the stress hormone like cortisol skyrocket. And as you know, this fight or flight approach weakens your immune system and literally causes inflammation to the body at a cellular level. Yeah. So, you know, it's no coincidence that over half of America is suffering from a chronic disease right now you know, like diabetes, like obesity, like heart disease. And a lot of this is caused by our thoughts yeah. and stress. Yeah. So, so I'd love to hear what your thoughts about that are. Oh, no, I, I totally agree with you because I mean, I'm, you know, luckily I was able to continue to be treating my patients uh, even throughout the, uh, the quarantine period. And I hear it all the time, man. Like I'm really I mean, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily close with my patients, but I spend a good 45 minutes to an hour with them a couple times a week. So it's a situation where, you know, we talk, I hear their stories. I, I tell them some of my stories and I hear them stressed out. I hear them depressed. You know, they're worried about their jobs. You know, one of them in particular, he, you know, they shut down operations. So he basically lost his job for a couple months. He's waiting for his unemployment check. You know, he's waiting to, he's doing side jobs here and there just to make ends meet. You know, he's got a family to feed and I hear it all the time. You know what I mean? I hear it. I hear them, you know, complaining, you know, one day they're, you know, maybe they'll be in a better mood, but most, most often than not, more often than not, they're, 
you know, just down in the dumps. You know, I, it's my job. I feel like it's my, it's on me to make them feel good for those 45 minutes to an hour and just distract them from everything that's going on outside. So yeah, man, I totally feel you on, you know, thoughts are going to fuel how you're going to do that day, how you're going to do that week. And, you know, I think if you wake up with a positive attitude, I know you talk a lot about gratitude, you know, just be thankful for the things that you do have and how I can make this day a better day and make this week a better week. You know, I think that's definitely the way to go. Yeah, brother. I appreciate you sharing that. And, and I just, before I move on to H, I do want to offer your audience, your community, just a couple actionable steps they can take to, to really uh, preserve their mental health and peace of mind. Number one is stop watching the news. Now, Understand, I'm not saying don't stay updated with what's happening in your community. Yeah. However, understand that a majority of these news stations, they're programmed to keep your eyeballs on their screen. That's how they get advertising money. That's how they project their agenda onto you. And understand, I want you to stay updated, but by perpetually living in fear, you're, you're, you're again going to raise those cortisol levels. So maybe set a limit how much social media you consume, how much, you know, TV you consume during these times, you know, get outside and, and feel that sun on your face, connect with nature. And number two would be create some sort of affirmation you say before you go to bed, because your first thought in the morning is almost always going to be the same last thought at night. Mm. So so make that final thought a positive one that promotes peace and calm. Maybe, maybe, you know, one of the things that I tell myself is, you know, I am safe. I am secure. Uh, the world is so abundant and I choose to love, I choose to lead with love rather than fear. Yeah. And, you know, find something that works for you and, and, say that before you go to bed. I really believe that'll make a help, uh, make a big difference in people's uh, thought patterns. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I couldn't agree with you more on the, the news front, man. I mean, get your, get your daily dose of what's going on. I mean, I've been paying attention a lot to the local news, obviously that impacts us a lot as far as, you know, the mandates, as far as mask wearing and what's open, what's not. But you know, you don't want to take in too much of that negative energy because it'll, it'll weigh you down. It'll weigh you down and just put you in a, in a negative headspace. And that's not where you want to be during this tough time. So I couldn't agree with you more. hundred um, percent. And what about relationships? How important are relationships for human beings to thrive? Oof. So, so before I answer that, let me, let me jump in because first of all, it's really important to remember that our thoughts manifest into feelings and emotions. And I think we spoke about this the first time on your show, how a lot of times men were very numb to our feelings and emotions. Uh, it's much more feminine to be more expressive and communicative of your feelings and emotions. So understand that your thoughts manifest into feelings and emotions and your feelings and emotions create your habits. Uh, so, so H is for habits and I'll get into relationships very soon. Um, however, Brian, I know you're probably, uh, probably you experience this too. Sometimes there's so much talk about people like craving motivation. It seems like people are always searching for their next hit of it. You know, whether that be like a rock video or a Gary V video. And we need to remember that motivation is what gets you started, but habit is what keeps you going. And, you know, there's a lot of books and research around habits. The College of London says it takes 66 days to form a new habit. And to be honest, I think that's bullshit. You know, did it take you 66 days to learn how to brush your teeth? No, learned it right away, pretty much. Exactly. What about yeah. making your bed? Did that take you 66 days? Nope. Okay, so if you're really committed to something, yeah. thanks for playing along, B. If you're really <laughs> committed to something, you can make it a habit much sooner. So yeah. understand there will be resistance. There's going to be discomfort. And what I tell my clients is that the first week's going to be unbearable. The second week's going to be uncomfortable. But that third week, you're going to feel unstoppable. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I feel like um, one of the habits that 
you know, really resonates with me is, is making lists. You know, I make lists every single day. You know, I add on to my list if I didn't complete it the day before, but you know, I essentially challenge myself to try to knock out, like I love putting the little check mark or the thumbs up on each individual item that I have. And, you know, it just keeps me organized, you know? And I think that, you know, sometimes people, if they don't make lists, they're, they have, they're so scatterbrained. They have so many things on their minds. Like, Oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. And then it's like, they get distracted with something. And then next day they think back, Oh wait, I never did what I knew in my head I was supposed to do, but I never wrote it down. So it didn't get done. So I think one of the things as far as habits is make a list, make a to-do list for the next day, maybe the, the night before, so you can kind of start processing all that stuff, you know, uh, think about positive things as well, like you said, and, um, you know, just knock those out. And I feel like somebody's going to feel way more productive if they're able to knock out the things on their list. Dude, I love that. And, and a lot of people, they try to add four huge habits at once. Like yeah. they're waking up at 5 a.m., they're doing CrossFit, they're going vegan, they're eliminating sugar all in the same week. And that's not yeah. sustainable. Yeah. And, and like you said, start off with something small and understand, Brian, what's really cool about what you said about like, you know, accomplishing these small tasks is each time you do that, you're actually getting a hit of dopamine, yeah. right? Which is that, that, that powerful neurotransmitter that's connected to your reward center. So yeah. that's going to fuel you for your next habit and, and to every action, to a feeling or emotion, you know, uh, sorry, tie, tying every action to a feeling or emotion. So how is stretching for 15 minutes every morning going to make you feel? Oh, amazing. <laughs> it's it's going to make you feel amazing. It's going to make you feel, you know, more fluid, more alert, more focused, more energized, more limber. How is going to bed earlier going to make you feel the next day? Yep. Yep. Oh, 100%, and, man. And, and, and understand, when we understand, Brian, that literally everything we do is tied to an emotion. A lot of people eat, you know, a bag of Sour Patch or, or a cheeseburger, both of which I love, by the way. And they eat that because in the present moment, it's going to give them this feeling of like, yes, that's so delicious. And then 10, 10, 10 minutes later, they probably wish they didn't have it. Why did I do that? <laughs> so we're chasing dopamine in the wrong places oftentimes. Yeah. So by doing things like you said, like literally, you know, mark these things off and, and cross them off and reward yourself and have that manifest momentum to the next thing. Yeah. 100% man. Couldn't agree with you more. So, so I'm ready to talk about relationships if you are. Yes, let's do it. So again, we talked about thoughts. We talked about habits. R is for relationships. And you've probably heard the expression that you're the average of five people you spend the most time with, or your net worth is your network. Yeah, yeah. Right? Or, both sorry, both. it's your network is your net worth. Yeah. So those are both extremely true statements. However, we need to make sure that we are attracting the energy and vibration that we want to. And in order for that to happen, we need to invest in the relationship with ourselves. So the best relationships are built on respect, trust, love, generosity. And you can't give those things to others if you don't give them to yourself. 100%, yep. And to build up that relationship with yourself, it requires action. So you need to address your thoughts, emotions, habits, and make sure that they're in alignment with the type of relationships you want to attract. So a perfect example of this, and you may have a friend like this too, Brian, is I have a friend, bro, and he's so fucking picky when it comes to girls. He actually lives in the building where your practice is, in oh, okay. uh, the quantum. Okay. And every time I see him, uh, he's like, bro, you know, I just want to find a girl who's super fit, you know, she's sweet, she's kind, she has a nice family, she, she's ambitious, she's loving, <laughs> all of these things, right? Yeah. She can cook. So he has a and, checklist, basically. Exactly. But meanwhile, meanwhile, this dude spends three hours a night watching Sports Center when there's not even sports going on right now. Jeez. And he has one, one hand in a bag of 
hot Cheetos or Doritos, depends on the night. And the other hand, fondling himself. And I'm like, bro, you, you're, you're saying you want these things it's like in you your life. You expect so much from somebody else, but it's like, you got to bring something to the table too, my brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, exactly. Yeah. You're not embodying the things you want to attract. So exactly. it all starts with you. So I just encourage people to look yourself in the mirror and be honest with yourself. How are you showing up in the world? Because that is the energy and vibration that you're going to attract in your life. And you know, I'm sure you can relate. Like it's probably one of the reasons you've attracted uh, some people, whether that be Rachel or whether that be some of your friends or colleagues into your life is the way that you're showing up. Absolutely. I mean, Rachel's like probably my ultimate role model. I mean, she's, she's a beast. I mean, she has so many things going on. She works extremely hard. So that motivates me to be a, a better man on a daily basis. You know what I mean? It's like, damn, I gotta, I gotta keep up with her. You know, she's got so many things. So it just pushes me to, to take my, my game to that extra level in everything that I do. You know what I mean? So you know, I'm really grateful for her. I love that. And, and I think that that's like a, a good segue. You know, there's probably someone listening right now who has a relationship or multiple relationships in their life that are toxic yeah, or that, you know, drain their energy that drain their life force yeah. and understand that again, this type of dynamic causes stress, causes inflammation, just like if, if Brian or I, uh, you know, went to Brian, what's like your favorite junk food? Ah, uh, favorite junk food. Some Cuban food, some Colombian food. No, I would say pizza, man. I mean, I could always okay. go for a good pizza. Okay. So I love pizza and shout, I'm not saying don't eat pizza. However, understand that pizza, right, is usually cooked with a bunch of processed vegetable oils the cheese is usually low quality so so just like that food is going to cause inflammation to your body yeah a toxic relationship will do the same absolutely so i really just encourage people to take inventory of your relationships now and if your relationships aren't where they need to be look at yourself how can you show up in a more powerful way what areas of your life do you want to address and improve yeah, totally agree, man. So, you know, I, I'd love to, I'd love to hear, and I know you're going to come on, come on my show after this, but I'd love to hear maybe, is there one thing during this quarantine that, uh, that you've kind of worked on, not business related or anything like that, but more like personal wise? Uh, I mean, honestly, just, becoming better in my craft, man. I mean, being the, the best healthcare practitioner that I can be, um, you know, as far as self-love, um, you know, obviously staying in, in physical shape, obviously that was really hard during the quarantine, but you know, like you always preach movement is the key. Even if it's 30 minutes a day, you just got to get it in. I mean, that's going to release those, you know, transmitters in your body. It's going to, those feel good chemicals. Um, you know, it's, it's going to, it's an antidepressant, you know what I mean? To move and, and stay physically fit um, and just nourish well my body with, you know, as high quality foods as possible. Obviously we were indoors for a long time and it was a situation where, you know, essentially we were moving less so we could possibly be storing more calories. Now, what kind of calories you can be storing? I mean, that was the key for me. So I always looked at it as now is a time where I gotta be, my diet has to be the most on point than it's ever been you know, just so I don't come out of this quarantine, you know, a double lard or whatnot. So, you know, it's, uh, I think, you know, just focusing on essentially my principles, man, natural health, you know, my fitness, my nutrition, you know, I stayed up with my supplementation, you know, getting all my immune boosting vitamins, you know, if I couldn't get outside, I would, you know, take some vitamin D3 supplements, um, you know, immune boosting supplements as well. And, uh, you know, just staying mentally fit, man, just staying mentally strong and, you know, luckily, uh, I'm fortunate enough to have a great support system around me where, you know, they, they keep me uplifted. I love that brother. Yeah. And, and I know, I know you are a big gym guy. I know you love yeah. going to the gym. Yeah. So 
So were you implementing a, a much more body weight stuff? Yeah, man. I mean, we were relegated to, to a lot of home, home gym equipment, you know, little dumbbells here and there, a lot of body weight uh, workouts. Um, Rachel know, has a Peloton, right? You guys have one? Rachel got a Peloton. I actually don't have the shoes. I was thinking about it. I was like, no, nah, that's more, I don't know, man. Something about, I've never been a cycling guy. I've never been yeah. like the spinning and I don't know. The seat just bothers me. I don't know. It's just, it's just not my thing. I'd rather do my cardio and just more like hit training. Yeah. Like that. I'm more of a weight, weightlifting guy myself, but, um, you know, I've, uh, I have a couple gadgets here, you know, like some push up, like push up machines and stuff like that. I have a, something called an X three bar. I have you ever mm. heard of that. Yeah. 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 X three bar, uh, is actually created by a scientist. His name is Dr. Jack wish and a great man. I met him before, uh, brilliant man um he's actually created two machines not only the x3 bar but uh something called osteo strong um and that's amazing treatment for you know to basically strengthen your bones essentially it may even be a cure for like osteoporosis but people could do the research on that um but yeah man x3 bar i mean you could pretty much hit up every single exercise bench you know, tricep, arms, legs. I mean, you could pretty much do everything. So just things like that. Maybe take a run outside. Hell yeah. Uh, but just staying active, man. Like just, just get, stay moving, stay, stay moving. Right. Yeah. I love that. I yeah. love that you were able to pivot and, and improvise during these times. Yeah. So getting back to thrive. So yeah. again, we spoke a lot. T is for thoughts. H is for habits. R is for relationships. I is for intention infusing intention into everything that you do. So before you start your day, before you move your body, you know, setting intention, hey, hey, what do I want this movement practice to look like? I want to connect deeper, you know, and form this strong mind-body connection. I want to be more conscious of my breath. Before you eat your meal, infuse intention. Hey, think about all of the people, all of the processes involved in getting that food onto your plate before you have a big meeting, before you have a conversation with your partner. These are all opportunities to you to, for you to really set intention. And I think a lot of times we're so mindless with our actions and behaviors. And that's why sometimes we don't get the results we want. So again, setting intention will be extremely powerful if we associate it with an elevated emotion. You know, what are the feelings I'm experiencing from going on a run, eating a delicious meal, connecting with friends? These elevated emotions like gratitude, love, abundance will release oxytocin in our body and literally swell up our heart. So how can you go from feelings of scarcity to abundance, replace fear with love, compassion instead of resentment, and I really believe it all starts with intention. Yeah. No, I couldn't agree with you more, man. I mean, thinking about, you know, what you just said and breaking down every single little thing that you talked about, being with friends and family, you know, being, having the ability to run outside, you know, especially in our city. I mean, it's a gorgeous day outside today. You know, just, just being thankful and, and grateful for, for the ability to do that, the ability to have people in your corner that support you and love you um rather than think of the negative or you know like you said go mindless through your day and you know not really focus on all that positive rather focus on the negative which you know it defeats the purpose for sure bro and just like you said you know first thing like it's super simple you know what are those things like the things that you would typically take for granted you know a roof over your head clean water the sunshine food in your fridge you know, your family members are healthy. There's so many things that we overlook on a day-to-day -day basis that are really the foundation of our life. Like, you know, I, I can't imagine what my life would be like if something happened to one of my parents or my wow. brother, you know, I would be devastated. And, wow. and, and I really try and keep that perspective throughout the day, especially getting the day started. Um, I'll, I'll go over the last two quickly. You know, I want to leave some time for, for more questions if you have. So, you know, T, thoughts, H, habits, R, relationships, I, intention, and V is for vitality. So energy is the most valuable currency you have. And if you dream 
of making an impact and creating something special like Brian and myself, it's going to require a lot of energy. And we gain energy through movement, nutrition, sleep, purpose. And, you know, purpose is the ultimate fuel, I believe, for our journey through life. So it all comes full circle because we need to make sure that we adopt the necessary habits to feed our energy levels throughout the day. Um, and, you know, I, three questions I'd love to ask, you know, I'd love to ask your audience because again, we're all about implementation. It's great to be inspired by what Brian or I say for a minute or an hour, but how can we actually take action and implement some of these things? So the first question is what does your morning routine look like? You know, what are yeah. those first 30 to 60 minutes like? And Brian, I'd love for you to share yours. What I see, you know, with a lot of the people I work with who are, you know, oftentimes executives or high level entrepreneurs is right away. The first thing is they're on their phone, they're on their email, they're on LinkedIn, they're on social media and understand that, yes, that does give you that little dopamine hit because that's why so many people are addicted to social media is because every time someone likes your picture or comments on your video, yeah. right? Or compliments your hair, that's giving you a dopamine hit. And, and, you know, it's also spiking your cortisol. When you go in first thing in the morning, checking your messages, social media, you are in reactive mode. Yeah. You're reacting to everything outside of you. So, you're not Literally, the, within yourself. The, like, and, and there's so many different practices that work for people, right? Literally, though, just turn your phone on airplane mode for the first 30 minutes. Yeah. And then, and, and don't look at your phone. You know, whether that means you take a cold shower, whether that means you go for a little walk or cuddle with your lover, you know, something that's going to energize you and fill you up. I'm not even going to, like, go over mine. You know, I, I can, but... This is specific for each person, but I really encourage you not to just go straight to your phone. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. I totally agree. I mean, for me, it would be, like you said, you know, hug, kiss Rachel, say good morning, definitely pet my dog. And I absolutely love my dog. That releases, you know, those feel good chemicals as well. And I would say take in life and that's water. I mean, 70% of our body is water. I have made it a habit of waking up, going straight to my fridge and drinking glass after glass of water and just hydrating myself, getting all my organs started to, to get going throughout the day. Uh, I add a little lemon, you know, for a little detoxification. And, you know, that's, that's, that does me really well, man, because I feel like a lot of people don't stay hydrated throughout the day. And, you know, I think getting the body off to the right start and by drinking that water, um, you know, it really gets me going. Like sometimes I don't even need, you know, I'm guilty of, you know, drinking some coffee every now and then as well. Um, you know, but sometimes with just the water, man, that energizes me so much that I'm ready to go. And yeah, like intermittent fasting as well. You know, just drinking yeah. coffee with that, you know, with several glasses of water, man, I'm good till noon, one o'clock before I eat my first meal. So I'm very, I like to be very clear in the morning. Yeah. And, and those two things you said, you know, there's very few things like as health professionals that yeah. we would say like, Hey, this is something that everyone should do, no. but literally everyone should hydrate first thing in the morning, yeah. ideally with, you know, high, high, high quality water, yeah. you know, spring water's best. Try not to drink from plastic and, yeah. and intermittent fasting is so powerful because especially when you add movement on top of that and you're in a fat burning state and you're not bogged down by uh, any glucose, yeah. you know, especially with what people in this country typically eat for breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think those are two super simple, but really powerful practices. And unfortunately, a lot of people think it's normal to feel tired during the day. They've accepted mediocrity. Yeah. And I just want people to understand that you're not born to be mediocre. You were born to perform at a high level every single day until you die. And 
if you if you want to live an abundant life, it's going to require that peak vitality. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I mean, speaking of of staying hydrated, I mean, I feel like water is what you call a, a free drug, right? It's a free natural drug. And, you know, you always harp on the fact that we should all overdose on these natural free drugs, such as water. Um, can you talk about you know, some of the other free drugs that are out there that, you know, maybe not everybody takes advantage of. Yes, dude. I love that. And, uh, and it's funny how this concept came into play. Like I was giving a talk and it was like the night before and I, comp and I had like kind of my layout of what I was going to talk about. And I, and like, right before I went to bed, I was like, wait a second, I kind of want to try a new opener. And I literally got onto stage and the first words I said were, hi, my name is Jeremy Abramson, and I'm a drug addict. And everyone was like, <laughs> because I was introduced as like this health and wellness professional. So it was, it was really funny to get that reaction. Yeah. And, and again, like you mentioned, water. This is an amazing free drug that we oftentimes take for granted. Uh, the other free drugs that I want people to overdose on and really make sure you are taking advantage of are sunshine. You know, obviously, if it's in the middle of the day and the, the UV rays are strong, protect your skin with a high quality sunscreen. But first thing in the morning, first thing in the morning, you can really get all of these free drugs at once. You can hydrate while getting some sunshine. That sunshine is going to give you vitamin D which is responsible for 20% of your genome. Mm. Your, your vitamin D levels and 70% of Americans are deficient in vitamin D. And this leads to a whole host of problems, right? Yeah. It leads to mental health issues. Understand that by getting sufficient levels of vitamin D, that's a precursor for things like serotonin and testosterone. Um, and also, I think it's worth mentioning too that you know, if you have a darker complexion with your skin, you know, maybe if you're Latin or black uh, or, or an islander, wherever you come from, if you have a darker complexion, understand that you have higher levels of melanin. So you're not absorbing as much vitamin D. So like Brian mentioned earlier, that would be a great opportunity to supplement with a high quality vitamin D3 supplement. Um, and then, you know, the other free drugs, again, we have sunshine water movement, simply stretching, you know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. It can Brisk be some walk 30 minutes around your neighborhood. walking, yeah. you know, a few push-ups, a few planks, whatever, whatever it is. And, and then breath, you know, we take 25,000 breaths every single day, but most of them we're not even conscious or aware of. And your breath has the ability to control your nervous system. You can impact your heart rate, your blood pressure, your stress levels simply with your breath. Absolutely. So, you know, a simple thing people can do, Brian, is like when they're feeling anxious or stressed, whether that be, you know, they just got in an argument with their lover or they're stuck in traffic or they want to calm themselves before bed, is just taking, you know, six, six breaths, four seconds in through the nose eight seconds out the mouth, and that's going to really allow them to relax and activate that parasympathetic rest and digest nervous system. Yep. Yep. I mean, yeah, I mean, think about a, a yoga class. I mean, think about how many people are into yoga. And I mean, you spend your time in a yoga class doing that type of, of deep breathing. And I mean, look how much people benefit from that. So I mean, you could, you don't necessarily have to go to a yoga studio, you could just meditate for 15 minutes a day and, and really focus on your breathing. And I think it'll have a, a huge impact. Yeah, brother, for sure. And, and, you know, I really encourage people to lean into these things, you know, nature, especially that it's summer now, and most people have access to a nice climate. You know, we have that peak Miami humidity. Mm -hmm. um, Brutal. <laughs> yeah, it, it's definitely, it's definitely challenging, especially if you're not used to it. So I encourage people to really tap in. And then Brian, the last thing I would mention is the last letter for Thrive is uh, E for enthusiasm. And again, 
Enthusiasm is just what enrolls people in your vision. So I personally work with a lot of CEOs and founders who want to attract the best talent to their teams. And enthusiasm is a gateway to creating culture. And enthusiasm is contagious. And it comes from the Greek word actually entheos, which means to be inspired or filled with divinity. And I think, you know, enthusiasm is just a powerful energy. And it, when, when it comes down to it, people are always doing business with people, you know, and people are attracted to passion and enthusiasm. So it's also a sign that you're likely living in purpose. Yeah. It's hard to be enthusiastic about something you don't care about. Of course. Um, Cause people feel that energy too. It's like, you know, a salesman selling a product that he doesn't believe in at all. And uh, you know, I think a lot of my success up until now has been a product of my enthusiasm for life and just helping people. Yeah. So uh, I think now more than ever, man, the world needs more enthusiastic leaders to just take action and lead with positivity and optimism. Absolutely. All right, big dog. So I want you to basically summarize for the audience, everything that we've been talking about today, the acronym of thrive and how humans can thrive using these individual uh, techniques and, and habits and relationships and, and, and living their life with intention, vitality, and enthusiasm. My man, you just took the words right out of my <laughs> mouth. So, so yeah, you know, I just, I just want people to uh, leave this show um, understanding and feeling inspired to, to understand that you're not designed to live an average or mediocre life. Like, you do have a specific unique gift to share with the world. And my mission is to really inspire you and empower you to do that and step out of mediocrity, stop just living and really start thriving. So thrive, again, T is for thoughts, okay? Become aware and conscious of those thoughts that don't serve you. How can you replace those with ones of more, uh, gratitude and abundance. Yeah. Then we have H for habits. Okay. R is for relationships. Remember that the relationship with yourself is a direct relation, a direct reflection of every other relationship. If you're in, in your life, if you don't have a good relationship with yourself, you're probably going to treat other people like shit too. Yeah. Right. And then I is for intention. Really stop pause as often as possible and just kind of observe wow like this is so beautiful that brian and i are able to connect virtually you know it's so beautiful that i'm able to use my mouth to speak and my ears to listen so many amazing things that we take for granted and then v is for vitality you know really i would i would suggest bookending you know your evening routine your morning routine really preserve those two things and then finally, E is for enthusiasm. That's really going to attract people to your vision. That's going to help you uh, operate from a place of enjoyment, fulfillment, and, and, and not be stuck living a life, you know, of just this. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, man. I couldn't agree with you more. That's a, a, an absolutely great acronym to basically live on and live, live your life by, I think it could help a lot of people. So to all my, uh, uh, to my audience members out there, um, you know, I love what Jeremy had to say, follow this man, Jeremy, drop your handles real quick. So people can know, you know, learn more about you, follow you and, and see this enthusiasm for themselves. For sure, brother. I appreciate that. So, you know, the places I'm most active are Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn. And, and you can find me on all of them at Coach Jeremy 305, J E R E M Y. And shoot me a message there. And I'd love, I'd love, Brian, for honestly people to post in their stories what was the biggest takeaway they had from today's show? Like, what is something that you plan on implementing that Brian and I spoke about? And, you know, I have the Energy Exchange podcast which Brian has been on before, and we're about to uh, record another show. So definitely check that out too, guys. Trying to provide as much 
uh, valuable content, valuable knowledge and wisdom from the top health professionals in the world. So I'm so excited to connect with you. And remember that you are designed to thrive. Hell yeah, man. All right, brother. So, so thank you so much for coming on again, man. And uh, I definitely look forward to hopping on your uh, podcast and just dropping some more knowledge. All right, man. So uh, until next time, I guess. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, brother. Talk soon. Peace.